In this video we're going to take a look at the definition of min terms and max terms and the synthesis of uh, binary functions in terms of either a sum of products or a product of sums. For a function of n variables, the a product or and term in which each of the variables occurs exactly once is called a min term. So here's a little example. Uh, we have little m6, which corresponds to binary 110, that's why it is called m6, it is equal to x2 and x1 and x0 naught. So we use the positional system here where x2 is the most significant bit and x0 is the least significant bit. And similar to min terms, we can also define max terms. And those are defined as the complements of the min terms. So we start out when we make capital M6. The capital M stands for the max terms. We start out with little m6, which is the min term. We complement uh, this here. And then we use um, the example that we have up here. So this is x2 times x1, or x2 and x1 and x0 naught. And then we complement this. And next step is to use the Morgan's law. And that then tells us that this negated form here can be written as x2 naught plus x1 naught plus x0, where the pluses are OR gates. So it's x2 naught OR, x1 naught OR, x0. Here we are looking at an example for min terms and max terms for three bits. So we start by writing down the three bits x2, x1, x0 are their names. And we just count up in binary 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, etc. up to 1, 1, 1. In decimal, we, are, we were counting 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 7. The min terms are labeled corresponding to the decimal representation here. So little m0 is the min term that goes along with the triple zero here. And that is x2 naught and x1 naught and x0 naught. The corresponding max term is the complement of this one here. So using again the Morgan's law, we can write that um, x2 naught, x1 naught, x0 naught inverted is equal to x2 plus x1 plus x0. And so that is the max term that we have over here, the capital M0. And then we proceed similarly. Um, little m1 is x2 naught and x1 naught and x0. So the, for the zeros, we have the naught in here. For the ones, we have the uncomplemented variable. And for the max term, we have again the complement of that, or to think about it differently, Whatever is zero here will appear directly in the max term, x2 or x1 for those two zeros. And then for the one over here, we get an x0 naught that gets ORed into it. So generally speaking, the min terms are one for a particular uh, combination, and that combination is true. And the max terms are zero when that particular combination is true. So here, for example, when we have x2 or x1 or x0 and all three of them are zero, then the OR combination of the three is going to be zero. Whereas here, if we have x2 not, x1 not, x0 not, we have one and with one and with one after we complement those. So all three are one and that gives us a one. So in general, we will see that min terms are used to synthesize the ones in a function, and max terms are used to synthesize the zeros in a function.
okay so let's write this down here uh, min terms are um, one if two and max terms are zero if true now here's a small example where we are going to implement the binary function using either min terms or max terms so the function that we're looking at is described in this truth table here we have two inputs x1 and x0 and one output f so for 0 0 we want to have a 0 at the output for 0 1 we want to have a 1 at the output for 1 0 we want to have a 1 at the output and for 1 1 we want to have a 0 at the output if we use min terms to implement this function then we synthesize the ones in the uh, table here so f then is equal to little m1 or m2 so when either the 0 1 combination is true or the 1 0 combination is true then we are going to create the 1 at the output and m1 is just equal to x1 complement and x0 so that's here the x1 complement and x0 and m2 is x1 and it with the x0 complement and then we order two together so that leads to what is known as a sum of products SOP okay and if we want to synthesize the zeros of the function then we go here and here and now we are using max terms in order to synthesize f so that it is zero in those locations where it's supposed to be zero note that uh, when we did that with min terms we synthesized the ones and then automatically the rest that we did not make one is go are going to be zeros if we do the max terms then we explicitly make the zeros happen and whatever is not uh, going to be a zero will then have to be a one because we only have zeros and ones in binary functions so for the max terms f is equal to capital m0 and capital m3 and that is written as uh, x1 or x0 in parentheses and then end it with x1 not or x0 not in parentheses So using min terms leads to a sum of products or SOP which synthesize the f equal to 1 terms and using the max terms leads to a product of sums or abbreviated POS which synthesize the f equal to 0 terms. So continuing with the example, the sum of product forms, which is repeated here, is x1 not and x0, and then or x1, x0 not. And we would show that in terms of uh, and and or gates, and not gates also, uh, the following way. So we have two and gates here for uh, the two products, and then for the sum, of those products we have an OR gate like this and the output is the function f and at the input we have x1 not for the first one here okay so here is x1 and then x0 so we show that down here x0 and then on the second AND gate we put in an x1 
like this and we put an x0 knot like this okay and we can see that if we look here at x1 x0 combination 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 and then we're going to label some of the intermediate uh, wires here so let's say this is a this is b so for a and b we're going to get the following so a will be 1 if x1 is 0 and x0 is 1 x1 0 x0 is 1 so this will be 1 here and that's the only place where it is 1 so the rest will be zeros and b will be 1 if x1 is 1 and x0 is 0 so that's 1 0 here that's this one and then the function f is just the OR of A and B so it is 0 here, it is 0 here and it is 1 in those two places and that is the function that we wanted to generate for the POS form which is repeated here we are synthesizing the zeros so that's capital M sub 0 and it with capital M sub 3 and here are the details in terms of x1 and x0 so we go here and make OR gates first okay so we have x1 OR with x0 and then we have x1 not show it like this and x0 not or together and then we have to take the end of the two the end of the m0 and m3 terms here so we have now an end gate we go in here and we generate our function f and we will check again whether that is actually correct so x1 x0 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 so let's make some intermediate uh, labeling here let's call this c and d so c is the or of x1 and x0 Okay, so C will be 1, or let's put it differently, C will be 0 and X1 are 0 and X and both X1 and X0 are 0. So it will be 0 here and for everything else it will be 1. And D will be 1, uh, will be 0 when both X1 and X0 are 1. So we will have a 0 here and it will be equal to one for all other cases because in all other cases one of those is going to be a zero and at least one of those is going to be a zero and that will put the one in here and that will go through the OR gate so we have three ones here for D and then F is now the AND function of C and D so that's equal to one when both are one that would be here and here and zero in those other cases and so we see that we do indeed get the same function with the product of sums form as we did get for the sum of products form and the difference is, the difference is just that in the product of sums form we have OR gates first and then an AND gate and in the sum of products form we have two AND gates first and then an OR gate after that